Hello you multi meticulous monitors of marvellous malts. It's a malt mention and thank you for that malt mention to Whiskey Stop Wonders. Thank you Whiskey Stop Wonders because that malt mention always happens in my channel ralphie.com before I start to review fancy good quality sippable spirits. That's what my channel does. It's a very specialist channel. So if you're looking for glow-in-the-dark cocktails, I'm sorry to disappoint you. However, if you're looking for in-depth, detailed reviews specifically on specific bottlings, I'm the channel for you. And I've got a wee mini-series going on here at the moment of some of Scotland's new distilleries, they're young distilleries and generally they're small distilleries because every distillery has to start somewhere and it's a good start, it's starting small and then you can grow gradually over time <coughs> and there's been a huge amount of new distilleries appearing in Scotland and in fact all over the world because it's become fashionable and one reason it's become fashionable is because more people are drinking less volume of alcohol and looking to invest in more quality of alcohol and this goes right across the whole range of consumer uh, durables everything from fashion handbags to Swiss watches people are people can only buy so much and therefore it makes sense to buy less but to buy better and this applies to liquor and I'm delighted to say that many, not all, many of Scotland's new distilleries are really stepping up to the mark and that includes Glen Weavis. Glen Weavis, a distillery very modern located just north of Inverness, north west of Inverness outside of a town called Dingwall, out in the countryside and has the unique situation of being 100% community funded. Now, I like that, and I'm going to tell you why. It says on the label, 100% community owned. Right, Till? Something else I want to tell you about this Glen Evis. It's a 2018 vintage, because the distillery only started in 2017, in fact late 2017 and it's bottled in 2022 so this bottling is only four years old four years old so a very young single malt and see if they were getting it wrong it would be a rough spirit with some wonky flavours but when you have palatable spirit it's such a, such a young age age it's a very strong endorsement as to the competence and ability of not just the distillery's provenance but of the people working there and managing it so there you have it so we're off to a pretty good start here uh, and i'd like just like to add that um it says on the label on the back of the label non-chill filtered natural color and we need to see this from the small distilleries. They need to separate themselves from the big brands, which are increasingly disappointing people over time if people are looking to actually taste and smell and, and connect with the experience rather than just have a superficial consumer consumption thing. Right, you know what I mean. So I poured a little bit of glass of this. Uh, first impressions. Rich fruitiness, pineapple, jam, mild ginger, creme brulee, quite a rich creme brulee, fudge note. And some lovely sourness, sour bitterness, almost apricot stone. We're really looking at, particularly for a young whiskey, it's important to always bear in mind when you've got a young whiskey, that's only four years old or five or six, it's going to be spirit led in the experience because there's very few instances where a cask will actually overwhelm the, the personality, the signature and the flavour of the spirit coming off the stills at such a young age. I mean, don't get me wrong, it can happen, particularly with freshly, uh, freshly conditioned 
quarter casks or even blood casks. But they're an exception, not the rule. There's not that many of them out there. But at the moment, uh, first impressions are very positive. And by the way, I know for a fact that Glasgow's Whiskey Club, in one of their whiskey nights, uh, had a bottle of this, which they, they, they got together, clubbed together and bought for the novelty of it, just out of curiosity. And they were absolutely delighted with it. In fact, it was their favourite whiskey of the night. You see, I get to hear these things because I've got my mayor to the to the the tom tom drums to the jungle drums there's something else i'd like to add to well we'll go with the first taste then i'll add some water and then i'm going to give you a little bit more information specifically about glen Beavis. this is bottled at 46.5 percent and it's that strength that really punches home the wonderful sour note of this whiskey, which is important because you don't want wishy-washy, clean, fruity, sweet whiskey. That will not bring people back to your brand because it's already done elsewhere. You want a demanding signature and the green sourness is wonderfully prominent. And what I can tell you, see over time, as the years carry on, we're gonna see some absolute sizzlers coming out of this distillery if they have a solid cask policy, which as far as I'm aware from my, um, from my private investigations, they do. So excellent stuff. Um, I'm gonna add some water now, I'll give you a bit more information before we go any further. The flavour initially is really dominated by sensations. It's green sour, it's um, cereal notes, very strong pungent cereal notes. So I'm going to add four millilitres of water. We'll leave it at that. So I'm bringing the strength down but not too far because I still want to get that pungency when I come back in a couple of minutes to smell and taste this whiskey again. And of course, as you already know, because you're a malt mate, younger whiskies open up more quickly because it's dominated by the spirit rather than by the activity of the casks. So I'm gonna to go to the, the box here, which is really cheap, a little bit in the flimsy side. I'm very pleased to see this. Uh, I'll tell you why, because we're not getting too much in the way of superfluous cosmetics here. The, this distillery is not charging us a premium for fancy boxes. We're getting a basic box. Again, this stands out, this gets noticed, this subtle understated messaging really matters. And it tells you it's a community spirit. And it goes on to mention that Founded in 2015, Glenmevis Distillery is one of the largest community benefit societies in the UK, crowdfunded by over 3,600 backers who collectively, from the community and beyond, have raised over two and a quarter million pounds to found, to crowdfund this distillery. Now that's a sweet little story. But in fact, it's a lot more important than you might realise because the, the crowdfunding and the patience of the investors who are genuinely invested in the success of the business, it means that Glen Weavis Distillery has not been relying on bank loans. And if you're in Britain, if you're working within the British economy, I'm telling you right now, relying on bank loans for your business is a very dangerous strategy which can destroy your business very, very quickly. And I'm going to explain why. Britain has a, a cultural habit when business loans are made that they happen to be, and I've got to say this is my opinion, it's just an opinion, they're not, they're not totally illegal yet. So. Banks, British banks, have a historical legacy of screwing over the people they lend money to, okay? It's, it's well known and it's well documented. Um, because the banks will provide the money, but along with the money, they will provide a contract. 
and that contract can absolutely tie down, tie up and completely inhibit the business from being successful because the bank leaves the door open to get their money back from their investment through either investing in the success of the business or the failure of the business. In other words, it, they could make more money from the business failing and then they just basically get a proportion or percentage of, of the salvage. Um, and there's a strong legacy in Britain for this, which is one reason why the British economy is so weak and has been for several decades now uh, because of, of this culture. And you don't hear about it, you certainly won't hear about it in mainstream media, um, but it's a fact. And when you have a distillery which has a huge advantage of what are in fact angel investors, then the angel investors will cut the slack. They'll give the distillery the space and the room and the freedom of decision making to actually operate in the best interests of the business without banks sticking the knife in and twisting it. Um, and you may say, hey, Ralphie, you know, oh, surely you're going a bit over the top with that statement. Well, I'm telling you right now, go and do your research. British banks are, frankly, in my opinion, notorious for the bad way in which they treat the customers and in fact are completely unanswerable for it. It's a very much a reflection of British society. Uh, and I believe there are small distilleries right now which will fail primarily because they've taken out bank loans, they've taken out financial contracts and they don't understand the small print um, and they don't know how to read the contract and they haven't regarded community funding as a viable option to financing their business, which they really, really should because technology allows it now. Now, something else, changing the subject completely. I think that to conclude, just to conclude, I think Glenn Weavis has really, through the community ownership model, done an awful lot to secure their future because all they have to do is make good juice and get it out there and, and just be honest about it and transparent. And the thing is, there's no reason for them not to be. They don't have to invest in all the marketing flannel and waffle that um, other businesses can be coerced into through money lending contracts right, from banks and, uh, and hedge funds, hedge funds as well. Don't get me wrong, it can work, but often it doesn't, because that's Britain, PLC. So, changing the subject now, another little bit of information that I want to kind of share with you is the quality of disclosure here on the packaging. It's simple, practical packaging, nothing fussy. It doesn't give you a whole load of flannel. It tells you a little bit about the community ownership and also tells you this is batch two, 2018 vintage. And it tells you it's matured in 60% first fill Tennessee whiskey casks, bourbon casks. I know, I know all you American fans. The American fans are saying a Tennessee whiskey is not a bourbon and a bourbon is not a Tennessee whiskey. But it's an American spirit. It's American mix, mixed mash bill spirit. And in Europe, we call that bourbon whiskey. So don't take it personally. It's just the way it is. And also 25% first fill Oloroso casks and 15% refill whiskey casks. So they're really balancing out the cask influence here in this short space of, space of time. And while they're doing it, you see, they're conditioning new casks right, to be filled with the next batches of whiskey. So when you really know about whiskey, you understand what's going on here. You can read between the lines. You can translate the messaging. This is intelligent packaging, by the way. Smart stuff. I've added some water. Let's go back to the nose. It's unpeated. Right, just got to say that unpeated. 
Highland whisky, so we can expect dry fruits and a kind of drier, complex finish. Highland, Northern, sorry, we know it's a Highland whisky, it's a North Highland whisky. So think about Balblair, Glenmonji. Think about Glenord, Dalmore. You're in that section north of Aberdeen, uh, north, north of Inverness, sorry, and north of Aberdeen, by the way, but particularly north of Inverness. Uh, and you get, this is, this is an area of character drums, character malts, and you're really getting this character here. And it just shows you, I mean, they built this distillery from scratch. It's an ultra-modern distillery and they're using biomass burners and they've got the little windmill outside, so they're, they're really, they're embracing modernity. And again, that's refreshing. Intense. Biting. Dry. Sour note. Powdered ginger. Vanilla in the background. Absolutely. A little bit of char or, or toasted oak. Quite prominent, particularly in the development. But the whole experience is an intense cereal grain with the emphasis more on the sensations than the actual flavour notes that you get from the grain, which are essentially cereal, biscuity, um, sort of, you know, Madeira cake type notes. Um, a, def a delicious, very competent, refreshing whiskey. And I just like to add that I do commend Glen Weavis for actually selling some of their casks of whiskey to independent bottlers. There are not a lot of new distilleries doing that. Right. Glen Weavis are. Do you know why? Because they are being practical pragmatic and looking after business and they know that one of the best advertising vehicles and publicity vehicles for your brand is when you allow independent bottlers access to bottling, packaging and selling your brand under your name to provide a diversity of flavour. Fantastic. Now this lets Glen Weaver's distillery focus on their small batches so they can establish um, a distillery profile, a familiar profile and a consistency of experience of brand definition. But it also means that we're going to, from independent bottlers, we're going to get single casks of this. And I tell you, they're going to be absolute belters. I, I can see this already. Very, very exciting. And uh, I certainly commend this. If you can still get a bottling, if you can't, don't worry. There'll be more along soon. So check out the, the varied reviews out there. And I think you... It is a young whiskey. It's a very young whiskey. I'm a bit miserable these days with the Mamot Marks. But anything over 70 is, is worth considering. I'm going to give this 81, right? And it's a malt mark, it's an integrity malt mark. And I hope you've enjoyed this review. As I say, I like to go for a bit of a deep dive. And importantly, it provides a point of reference globally online for little brands that are just getting started and they're finding their feet. And in a few years' time, we'll look back at videos like this here in the Bothy and it will have become a historical archive. It really will. And <laughs> it's the way it goes. It is just the way it goes. Thank you for joining me. Uh, I would conclude by saying a word, to, just to, to be aware of this, there is a an old brand out there called Ben Weavis. And Ben Weavis was basically a really poor quality brand. It was two competent stills that simply didn't work in the location. But occasionally at auction you will find bottles of Ben Weavis 
for sale. And even with big age statements on them, they don't really sell because they're, they're so bad. In fact, Ben Weavis is really, is famous for never being a good single malt. So don't confuse the two, right? Weavis, by the way, is a mountain, right? Big mountain, Northern Scotland. So don't confuse Ben Weavis with Glen Weavis. They are totally and completely different and there really shouldn't be any reason for you to confuse them. Just saying, I'm Ralphie, thank you for watching uh, my review and if you want to come back shortly I will have my review 994 extras and at the moment I have absolutely no idea what I'm going to be talking about. Absolutely none. Um, I'm going to give it a few hours before I record it. Uh, and I'm going to try and make it fairly light-hearted and entertaining. Put it that way. But anyway, I know how much you enjoy the extras. Extra content is extra knowledge, extra engagement, extra connectivity. And it's extra fun. See ya.